A child and adolescent uh, psychologist Claire Rowe again joining us live from Sydney. Always good to talk to you, Claire. But we've heard a lot from politicians in recent days about their plans to get kids off social media. Now, you and I have talked about the toxicity of social media for kids, but it strikes me that, of course, 13-year-olds uh, under the law are not so to, supposed to be on social media anyway. Um, tell us about your experience. So can, can those laws actually succeed in keeping kids off? Instagram, TikTok, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, so when you sign up for an account at the moment, you have to say that you are over 13 years of age. And I suppose, you know, that's very easy just to lie. And then there's no kind of regulation as it stands at the moment anyway. Um, so I suppose the difficulty with this and the pushback is to say, well, how are we going to enforce this if we legislate it? And, you know, as someone who, as a child psychologist, has known the very harmful effects on social media, they're very real. I don't even think we know the extent yet on the emerging brain. Um, and then also someone who thinks government needs to get out of our lives and individual responsibility and parents need to be able to parent as they see fit. I've had to kind of reconcile those two ideas. And I think what it does, it's not so much enforcing it. Um, it's about if we legislate this, it enables parents to have the confidence to band together and say, no, I don't care who else has it. I don't care if little Johnny has it in the classroom. You're not having it because it's against the law. And I think it will support parents in being able to do that. And yeah, I think we it's a actually really good point could because make a huge change in this yeah, way. It's a really, really good point because instead of parents just trying to apply sort of family rules, they're just saying, no, we're just enforcing the law of the land. It strengthens their argument and makes it easier for them to deliver it. I'm very keen to hear, Claire, though, what, what you are telling both uh, some of the, the, the young people you're seeing now and their parents, what advice you give them about social media, how they can avoid the worst of it or stay off it. Yeah, well, at this stage, I mean, I, I'm kind of fighting a losing battle and that's why I think this proposed legislation is good because I've been telling parents that I don't think at 13 people should be getting social media. I just don't think that there's any benefit. It's all harm. The difficulty is that their friends are on it and that's where they're socialising. But if you ask a child about it, even a teenager, hey, what do you feel if all your friends were off social media? Would that be OK if you didn't have it? They go, yeah, yeah, that's fine, no problem. So they themselves, you know, aren't kind of welded to it if no-one else is on it. Um, the effects on it, we know about the content and unfiltered and cyberbullying and low self-esteem. What I'm also concerned about is the way it's neurologically changing brains in terms of its addictive qualities and what are those brains not doing when they're spending five, six, seven yeah. hours a day on their phones? Yeah. You know, they're not getting free play, creativity, getting bored, social interaction. So it's about what they're not doing while they're spending so much of their life on their phone. Yes, yeah, spot on. It's a, it's a great worry. Thanks so much for talking to us, Claire. I appreciate it. Claire Rowe there, who's the child and adolescent psychologist, uh, cuts through all this stuff. She deals with it day in, day out.